Kumusta po mga kababayan? I'm sure na kahit wala po tayo sa Pilipinas, na eh, naaamoy niyo na ang mabangong simoy ng hangin na hudyat ng Kapaskuhan. Yes. Alam nyo ba ng grabe, no? Um, bare months na. Simula oh, na, na naman. September na. Correct. At simula na naman ito ng longest Christmas celebration in the whole Sa wild Christ. world. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ang saya. Pero alam nyo, pag Christmas nakaka-homesick. Because alam mo naman sa atin, um, nagkakaroon ng gathering ng mga extended yeah. families natin. Yes. Yeah. And I love the fireworks, too. Yeah. Alam niyo naman sa ating mga Pilipino, di ba? So, sobrang family-oriented talaga tayo. So, kahit anong pagsubok ang dumaan sa atin, pero pagkasama natin yung pamilya natin, eh talagang malalampasan natin yan. Alam niyo ba na, ayun nga sa, sa survey ng isang publication ng United States Agency for International Development, yeah. fil- for Filipinos, family is what most uh, important for them. Oh, yeah. wow. Correct. Family first. Yes, mm-hmm. family first. Parang At hindi lang yung pag... <laughs> Alam mo sa, sa mga Pilipino, hindi lang importante yung pagtitipon-tipon, pero pinagdadasal din natin yung mga family natin na nasa mga gandang karisuda. Yes. True naman. At ligtas. Ligtas yes. sila yeah. sa mga emergencies. Yes. Yeah. Yun nga lang, tulad ko, no? Kahit na magkakasama pa rin kami ng buong pamilya ko, sometimes if there's an emergency scenario, hindi ko alam ko anong gagawin ko. Yes, at tamang-tama yan. Pag-uusapan natin mm-hmm. yan ngayon dahil dito sa Pinoy Channel, pag-uusapan natin ngayon ang, ang mga topics tungkol sa pagkakaroon ng prevention at uh, preparedness no sa mga emergency right, yeah. na mangyayari. Kasi alam mo, importante yan dahil yeah. hindi lang itong pag-uusapan natin ay applicable sa akin, kundi applicable din to sa family ko at applicable yes. din to sa inyong lahat. Yes, we're so thankful and honored dahil nabigyan tayo ng kauna-unan at first-hand information yes. dahil mabibigyan tayo ng mga tips and tricks no yes. about how to handle emergency response dito sa Saskatoon First Aid for Life Training Facility. Correct. Right. So as usual, very exciting pa rin ang ating episode mm-hmm. today. Sa so, segment natin today, so malalaman natin about CPR, uh, injury prevention, first aid uh, kit, or ano man dapat gawin in yes. terms of the situation yes. like this. Yeah. Kaya para sa ating mga nanonood today, mga Kapinoy Channel, tutok lamang po kayo. And uh, marami pa tayong mga pag-uusapan mamaya. Yes, kaya wag na natin itong palangpasin pa. Simulan mm-hmm. na po natin to. And welcome to Pinoy, Pinoy Channel! Channel. Dito po tayo ngayon sa First Aid for Life. Kasama ko ang Chief Executive Officer na si Tami Redico. So Tami, welcome to Pinoy Channel. Thank you for having us. Well, explain to us, what is First Aid for Life? We are a training partner for the Canadian Red Cross. And so we deliver all the Red Cross programs. So if you were looking for a First Aid and CPR course, you would just give us a call and you would receive a Red Cross certification um, through our organization when you come. So, what kind of courses do you exactly offer? Well, the most common one is a standard first aid and CPR, which is two days or 16 hours. And um, that one meets the Saskatchewan OHS requirements. And so that's the one that we do the most, um, like primarily. And then there's an emergency first aid, uh, there's just CPR and AD, but there's also a babysitting course, and um, there's a childcare first aid. Are these well. requirement for employment or? Uh, yeah, like if you work at a daycare or you know businesses and stuff, yes, it is a requirement. But we really like it when people take it when they don't have to have it when they just want it, right? Exactly. Um, that everybody should know what to do. So if you if somebody would like to contact you, how would they get in touch with you? Yeah, we have a website where you can register for the courses online. It's uh, firstaidforlife.ca, and um, or they can give us a call at three zero six. 933-2472. Well, thank you. And uh, in a little bit, uh, First Aid for Life would be giving us demonstrations on first aid and how to, on what to do during uh, emergency situations.
Welcome back mga kababayan! So earlier today, you've seen how to respond to emergency scenarios if we have adults involved. And now let's talk about how to prevent injuries if we have infants or children that are involved in the scenario. So I have today with me, um, Alicia. Kumusta Alicia? Mabuti. Mabuti, that's good. So as I've mentioned, um, what are the emergency numbers, you know, that kids can phone in case they're alone at home or they're, you know, by themselves with their younger siblings? Yeah, so anytime that a child is working about the safety or the well-being mm -hmm. of you know a younger sibling or a yep. family member the go-to number is always 911 okay 911 okay okay so as we have mentioned 911 is the number to go to mm -hmm. um, and you should tell me what are the most common injuries that kids at home you know encounter when they are at home alone yeah the top three are definitely falls so falls, fall from a yeah. height off a bicycle mm -hmm. off a play structure yeah. uh, choking is obviously a big choking, one uh, yeah. as well as drowning actually as well as drowning mm -hmm. okay so um now example and um, we have an eight-year-old kid or an 11-year-old child mm -hmm. with a one-year-old baby. Mm -hmm. So in case the one-year-old baby is choking, what do we do? Well, I'm going to actually demonstrate that next for you guys. Um, and uh, this would be from for anyone ages zero to 12 months. So okay. zero to one. And then for anyone that's over the age of one, um, you were obviously watching the uh, first segment. And uh, what Tammy demonstrated uh, would be the skills we would use on anyone over one. So for children okay. and adults. Perfect. Yeah. So. Um, Pag, pagbalik po natin, Alicia will be demonstrating how to do injury prevention when choking is happening. Okay, Alicia, so one day I was babysitting at home with my baby Brando. Oh my, right yeah. There. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately he just started choking. So what do I do? Okay, well, if he's still coughing forcefully, mm -hmm. so there, that airway is still somewhat yeah. open, there's still air going in, we just want to be there for encouragement, okay. right? So we're just going to encourage that coughing. Mm -hmm. If though, either right away or um, all of a sudden there's no air going in, mm -hmm. or it's a weak cough, yeah, or you're and I'm panicking. Right, yeah, then okay. we're going to need to yeah. intervene. Okay? okay, so first thing we're going to do is send someone to call 911 if there's somebody there. Okay. okay, then we're going to grab the jawline nice and tight, rest baby on our arm, our arm okay. on our leg, and then using the heel of my hand, I'm going to give five firm back blows right in between the shoulder blades. So one, two, three, four, five. Then with that hand, I'm gonna support the back of the head, keeping that head mm -hmm. below the bum the whole time. I'll roll them over onto my other arm and I'm gonna give five chest compressions. So just below that nipple line, one, two, three, four, five. And back, one, two, three, four, five. And over, one, two, three, four, five. And back, one, two, and oh, if baby vomits, starts to cough, the food is out, then we're there for comfort, Perfect. kind of getting the baby okay. calmed down, and we'll go from there. Okay, yeah. so I guess it's very important to know that we phone 911 first before doing this, is that correct? Well, if you have someone that's there, mm -hmm. yeah, send them to call 911, okay. get that, uh, you know, that extra help initiated right away. Okay, yeah. Perfect. Okay, Alicia, um, let's go back to what you've mentioned earlier about, mm -hmm. you know, if someone falls or someone is drowning. Mm -hmm. So how do we um, prevent injuries? Yeah, so especially with falls, 88% mm -hmm. um, of yeah. head injuries uh, can, can actually be prevented just by wearing a helmet alone. So 88, yeah, that's yeah, kind of high. It is. Yeah. We're talking about riding a bike even, yeah. you know, uh, children that go snowboarding, mm -hmm. or, you know, even skiing, downhill yeah. skiing. Just by wearing a helmet can prevent a lot of these injuries. Okay. So we always want to be safe, yeah. right? Try and be supervised if we can mm -hmm. and okay. uh, play safe. So. Yeah. And so how about with drowning? Yeah, so if you do come across someone mm -hmm. that is drowning, yeah. so they're clearly in distress, yeah. uh, whether they're saying it, so whether mm -hmm. they're shouting, or you can just see them at the surface of the water, the number one thing is we're going to still be calling 911. It's still an emergency, so send someone okay. to call 911. And you, what you want to do is either something that's called a reaching assist or a okay. throwing assist. So okay. we never want to get into the water with someone who's drowning. Yeah. We are putting our life in danger if that's okay. in that point. So what we can use is a reaching assist. Mm -hmm. so what reaching some, assist. Yeah, okay. so what would be some things you could think of? Whether it's I a lake think, or a pool. Yeah, I would always think that if I am, you know, babysitting a child, I need to be at least like a hand. Yeah. Not, not a hand, but like an arm's, arm's length, length away. away. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, if we can touch the water, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. if we're in the pool and the, the child you know, yeah. falls over, mm -hmm. we can pick them up right away, exactly. right? I mean, yeah. that's, you know, that's obviously good supervision yeah. and what we want to be doing because yeah, children can grab fall. the shirt. 
Yeah. Exactly, yeah. But when we're talking oh, where the water's a lot deeper, yeah. maybe someone fell out of a boat and doesn't mm -hmm. have a life jacket on or they yeah. fall into the deep end of a pool, mm -hmm. we want to reach. Do? Yeah. yeah, we want to reach them something, so some yes. sort of material. Okay. So um, if you're thinking at a lake, that could mm -hmm. be a boat paddle. Right, oh, so maybe you can reach okay. them a boat yeah. paddle. Um, in a pool, like one of those pool noodles. So yes, I'm sure everyone's noodle. ridden around yeah. on those. Yeah. yeah. And then when it's a throwing assist, mm -hmm. you could either throw them a pool boy or you okay. could throw them a life jacket mm -hmm. uh, or a flutterboard, kind of anything that'll float yeah. that they can grab onto and then kick themselves back to safety. Yes. Okay. So that's what we want to be doing. The that's big good. concern, especially mm -hmm. with um, drowning or near drowning situations, yeah. so let's say we get them out of the water, mm -hmm. obviously they're going to be in a bit of shock. We're going to have yeah. to calm them down. But we do still want to always get them checked out. And the big reason is something called secondary drowning. Yeah. And secondary drowning can occur after a near drowning incident oh, okay. or situation. So it's called a secondary drowning. Yeah, secondary okay. drowning. So what happens is water and contaminants will get into the lungs. Because yeah. obviously we're underwater, we're breathing in that mm -hmm. water and what's yeah. in the water. And then what happens is the, that water and the contaminants actually mm. prevent the body from absorbing the oxygen out of the lungs. Okay. So then we can see people actually drowning yeah. or dying outside of the water mm -hmm. after. So okay. we always want to get them checked out. Perfect. And how do we get them checked out? Taking them to the ER. So hospital okay. is kind of always a, a good go-to mm -hmm. to play it safe. Okay. Um, we can go from there. Again. Again, let's bring them to the nearest emergency. Okay. So now let's talk about, um, again, if they're at home and then a parent is having a heart attack, Yeah. what does an 11-year-old boy or girl do? Yeah, so a lot of times when we're talking about children, they may not be able to recognize the signs exactly. of a heart attack, yeah. right? Or they may not be able to you know, figure out, oh, it's this, exactly. it's chest yeah. pain, oh, yeah, it's back like pain, or yeah. allergy. Yeah, exactly. So the go-to number is always that 911. Okay. 911, okay. Yeah, so if you're ever worried about a parent yeah. uh, and you, so you think that they're having some issue, yeah. call. Um, obviously, if the parent can still talk, we mm -hmm. can say, hey, mom, dad, do you need me to yeah. call for help? Do you need help? And even, you know, a nod or some yes. sort of acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. But if we see our parent in distress, 911 is always okay. your go-to. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So do you want to do some demonstration? Yeah, I think what we're okay. going to talk okay. about is some wounds and stuff. So. Okay, yeah. sounds good. So susunod na mga kababayan, what do we do if we get wounded? Example, if we go on camping or we are on the playground. Okay, so ayan mga kababayan, kapag summer po, isa sa mga paborito pinupuntahan ng ating mga bulinggit ay ang playground. Which, you know, kung minsan may mga aksidente talagang nangyayari. So, now we learn how to prevent accidents from happening. And one thing that we need to have is a first aid kit. So, Alicia will show us what we can have in a basic first aid kit. Yeah, so this here is a cute little first aid kit that anybody, any child or, or mm -hmm. children can keep on them when they go to the playground. So if we open it up, I'll just show you guys a couple things that uh, we think here at First Aid for Life is important to keep in there. Mm -hmm. So we've got a roller gauze. Roller gauze. Okay. Okay. Big thing is gloves. So I've already got mine on, yeah. uh, but gloves are super important. And why do we need to have gloves in a first aid kit? Yeah, we are always worried about um, any type of disease transmission, right? We've got bodily fluids, whether that's yeah. blood or vomit, mm -hmm. you know, saliva, that sort of thing. So we want to make sure we're wearing gloves to protect ourselves. Perfect. Yeah. So it's for our own safety and protection. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Then we also do have some tape in here. Mm -hmm. We've got a triangle bandage. So okay. if you take a first aid course, you'll definitely learn more about, oh, well, babysitter course, I guess, for, for yeah. children. Um, and then we've also got some... Uh, antiseptic wipes, a variety of different bandages, which I'm going to show you a few in a minute here. And then we've got scissors as well as some tweezers in the side there. So okay. that's what we think is uh, quite important to have in your in your first aid kit mm -hmm. if you're taking it to the playground or the park. Okay, and that's the perfect size, I guess, mm -hmm. because you can put it in your backpack. Most definitely, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, you can just throw it in the car, you know, if you're going camping, especially in the summer. So now, if you know, a scrape or a cut happen, mm -hmm. how do we put bandages on? Them? Most definitely. Yeah. So the number, the one that mm -hmm. at least, you know, we've all seen at least once is just a normal strip bandage. Yeah. So strip bandage is very common. Uh, a lot of people though don't know how to use the other bandages yeah. that you may find in a first aid kit. So they look kind of strange, mm -hmm. not really sure where to put them. A lot yeah. of times it's just guesswork, right? Because 
This one looks like an artwork to me. You know? <laughs> I don't see this often. Right. Yeah. And so when we are talking about, you know, cuts on, you know, the the uh, fingertips mm -hmm. or cuts on knuckles, yeah. uh, these are what we would want to use. Perfect. They're a lot better. So okay. we'll start off with our finger our fingertip bandage here. So that's the one okay. uh, that Jeannie said looks like art. So that's the one we're going to be using. <laughs> so so I'm the injured person yes. right now, okay? Yes. I Jeannie has injured right herself. There in the fingertip. So she's got a cut on her fingertip. Maybe she fell and cut it on a rock. So I've got my gloves on already, so that's the first thing. Then I'm gonna grab my antiseptic wipe. Okay, and I'm gonna pull that out of there. Mm -hmm. And we wanna make sure we're always cleaning wounds first. So we always wanna make sure that we're not sealing it with any germs inside. Yeah. So we're gonna clean that nice and good first. Okay. okay. Then I'm going to take my fingertip bandage here. We're going to try not to touch the uh, inside section and what I'm going to do I'll start on this side here just to okay. show everyone so we're going to start on this end and what I'm going to do is wrap those two flaps mm -hmm. and then I'm going to bring it down and then wrap it around again oh, so okay. it's covering her entire fingertip there so there's go. no uh, nothing exposed to the air yes. uh, wounds do heal quicker when they are covered mm -hmm. contrary to belief we don't want to leave it out in the open and yeah. let the air uh, heal it mm -hmm. okay we do want to always keep wounds covered and so that's your little fingertip bandage okay now what other bandages do we have? Yeah, well we've got our knuckle bandage our here. Our knuckle bandage. Okay, so okay. one thing to remember with our, our fingers is we're always moving them, yeah. right? So if I put a bandage, like a, a normal strip bandage, around my knuckle, it's gonna be pretty difficult yeah. for me to move and then it, we just get bothersome and we take it off, right? Exactly. So we've got a nice bandage here for our knuckle. So poor Jeannie, now there. she's fallen again. Injured again. Oh, always. Okay. Okay, so once again, I'm going to take a brand new sterile or um, antiseptic wipe. Sorry. So we've cleaned the wound again. We got to yeah. clean that wound again. So we still got our glove. Yeah. We're going to clean that wound nice and good. Okay. Ooh, there we there go. We go. Okay. Then we're going to take our knuckle bandage. And same thing. We'll peel back those covers, making sure we're avoiding the inside. And that's good to put your yeah. finger again if you can spread. Perfect. Yeah. So what we're going to do is goes right over top. And why do I need to spread my finger? Just so I can get the, the bandage around. Because I'm going to okay. wrap that top portion here. And then the bottom just below. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Because if I leave it closed, then I guess it's difficult to put the bandage Exactly. Yeah. Just, exactly. And then now she's got still full movement there. of her finger to, or her there knuckle and her finger. And so she can still go run around and plate the part exactly. and have some fun. Okay. okay. Now, and oh, the last yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sometimes what happens though is maybe that wound's a little bit too big for a small yeah. bandage. So maybe especially yeah, playing way too much. Yeah, a little too hard. Yeah. Okay, so if we take our strip bandage and as you can see, it's not covering the entire yeah. wound and we want to make sure that that whole wound is covered. So inside your, your first aid first kit aid. again, you're going to have a sterile dressing and then we've got our roller gauze here. So I got my antiseptic wipe again, I got my gloves, you betcha. Okay, so we'll clean that up nice and good. Oh yeah, it's, it's bleeding a little bit there. There you go. Okay, then I'm going to take my sterile dressing, which as you can see it's in a closed package, so a sealed package, sealed package so it's sterile, and I'm going to open it up. Okay, and I'm going to grab it from the top, so I'm leaving the bottom still sterile, so not it, not touching it myself, and I'm going to put it right over there top. You go. Okay, then I'm going to take my roller gauze, and I'm just going to get you to lift your arm a little bit, just to so make it easier for me. Yep. And when I wrap it, I'm going to try and keep this side out almost a, like a little tail. So as I'm coming around. So how many times do we need to do this? How many times do we need to wrap it around? I would use the whole roller the gauze. Whole roller. I mean, you have it, right? Yeah. So you might as well use it. But we do want to make sure that that sterile dressing is completely covered. Okay. So we don't want that sterile dressing yes. to uh, to be exposed. Okay. And then we would there, just keep going. Yeah, yeah, we're almost there. So how tight does this need to be? Just tight enough that it's holding the bandage okay. in place. Yeah, we don't want to be obviously cutting off any mm -hmm. circulation or you know hurting them in that sense. So let's just say we got all the way around and then all I would do is just tie it off here. Oh, let me just find my piece. Tie it off. Okay. And then we've got everything nice and bandaged. She's all good to go. Head back onto the playground. There I go. Now I can go run around again. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> so um, 
if we have kids here who would like to learn more about what we did today, mm -hmm. what we did today, how can they do that? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. So the course that's always recommended yeah. for children, so as young as 11, can actually take a babysitter's okay. course. So this is a babysitter manual here. Mm -hmm. The really nice thing about a babysitter course is it's 50% learning about first aid um, and uh, how to kind of uh, prevent injuries and that sort of thing and then the other half is all about child care so there child is a, quite a bit okay. of first aid that's mm -hmm. involved as well yeah. uh, so that's really important it's okay. a great course and if you guys do have any groups of uh, Filipino children that yeah. uh, you know even groups of 10 or even more that would like to have kind of a private course exactly, uh, yeah. you can definitely contact our office and we would be able to pro to provide that for you Perfect. and that's at 306-933-2472 933-2472 and then what do we have here? Yeah, the other two manuals that I have just to show is that child care first aid course as well as the, the uh, first aid course uh, and CPR that Tammy oh, okay. was talking about. So okay. those are the two other manuals that would be for uh, young adults. So anyone you know that's uh, getting into the workforce mm -hmm. and uh, especially those that are going to be working in daycares or with children the child care that's one is what they do. yeah okay mm -hmm. perfect so i am puma kababai and you've just seen how to prevent injuries when we have kids or infants around see you later bye Um, we're just going to talk a little bit about a heart attack and stroke and some of the differences. So I'm sure uh, you... That has always been my question. So what's the difference between a stroke and a heart attack? Yeah, exactly. And so first of all, a heart attack is just like, you know, the uh, name indicates it's in the heart, right? Okay. And so with a heart attack, there's many signs and symptoms. And I'm sure you've heard of people who have had heart attacks, right? And so what would be some of their signs and symptoms that they had? Did you ever hear about... What, what they were feeling when they had their heart attack? No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's hard to tell, like people are, they, they have sometimes a like, different uh, feeling when they experience in this, this kind of a uh, yeah. situation, right? Like, so what are, what, are, what, are, what are the symptoms? So sometimes they have that crushing heavy chest pain, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it radiates to one or both arms. Sometimes it goes up the neck. But sometimes it's just really bad indigestion that just won't go away and they're feeling weak and tired. Women will tend to have more some jaw pain as well. And you can also just have fatigue and nausea. And so there's a lot of um, symptoms that we refer to as the soft signs and symptoms where they're not having that chest pain that you typically think that you know represents somebody having a heart attack. So it's really important that we recognize that they're having a heart attack and we um, call 911. Okay. So early recognition, activate 911, and um, hopefully the ambulance will get there before um, you know they get worse. And we're going to be talking later about cardiac arrest and when the heart actually stops, and uh, what we're going to do for that. But if we recognize those symptoms and call 911, then um, hopefully we can get help there before they ever get to that point. In in between that the time when they when you call mm -hmm. the, the waiting time sure. for the 911 responders to come is there something we can do yeah you're just going to keep them calm okay we don't want them to be anxious because mm -hmm. of course then um, that's not good if they're having a heart attack um, the 911 dispatcher may suggest that they chew an aspirin um, but you can wait for the instructions from the dispatcher they're going to um, you know tell you what to do while you're waiting and, um, so it's a good thing to have an aspirin always. It's, yeah, you know, and first aid we have kit. to remember that's not Tylenol or um, ibuprofen or anything. That's Should be aspirin. aspirin. Yeah. yeah, and just wait for the dispatcher to give you the instructions because they want to make sure that it's a heart attack mm -hmm. before you would get them to, to take that, okay? Because it reduces the damage to the heart uh, while you're waiting okay. for the ambulance. So early recognition, calling 911 and keeping them calm, reassure, uh, have them rest and wait for that ambulance. Now a stroke is mm -hmm. happening in the brain. It's a disruption of blood flow in the brain. And so their symptoms are gonna be quite a bit different. Um, they're gonna have uh, perhaps a really bad headache. Uh, they can feel very dizzy, nauseous. Uh, eventually they can have some um, paralysis or numbness mm -hmm. on, on one side of the body. the body. That's right. And e uh, like either half of the body? Yeah, depending on which side of the brain the, the brain stroke is, okay. is happening. 
And um, so their symptoms are quite a bit different, but early recognition for that is, is very important as well. Because if you get to the hospital soon enough, they can give a drug that can um, dissolve a clot or the blockage, and then there isn't any permanent damage. And there's kind of a very short window where they can give that. And so getting them to the hospital quickly is very, very important as well. Again, during those waiting time, is there, again, anything we can do? Um, if they do have some of that numbness on one side of the body, you can roll them onto what we call the recovery position and just rolling them on their side, making sure that the feeling side is touching the ground. So mm -hmm. numb side up. Numb when, side up. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Para sa ating mga kababayan na nanonood ngayon, di ba? Yeah. So um, now if the, they, uh, the condition gets worse and they go into cardiac arrest, mm -hmm. and cardiac arrest is when the heart actually stops. And so they have collapsed, they're unconscious, and uh, so I'm just going to demonstrate what compression-only CPR would look like. When you take a first aid and CPR class, we teach a few other things, but I just want people to know what to do when the dispatcher says, can you start compressions? You know, when, the, when you call 911, they're going to ask you to do compressions while you're waiting for the ambulance. So can so, we demonstrate it? Yeah. Can I'm we going to demonstrate it in earnest? No, we're going <laughs> We're going to demonstrate on our, our dear mannequin here who's okay. been resuscitated okay. a thousand times. I would so. volunteer if you need to. <laughs> okay, um, let's do it. And then we're also going to, uh, there are hundreds of defibrillators in public places now, right? Oh. And so um, we are going to also demonstrate the defibrillator so that you don't need to be afraid of it. If a business has a defibrillator, uh, there will be employees there that know how to operate it. So I'll just show what the CPR along with the defibrillation might look like. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the scene and make sure that it's safe. There's no dangers. I'm also looking for clues to tell me what might have happened. Because perhaps you just walk in the room and, the, and you find the person laying here collapsed. Mm -hmm. or you didn't witness them collapse. So I, before, exactly. Right? Yeah. So I'm checking the scene. Everything looks safe. And now I'm going to make sure that he's just not having a nap. You know, okay. we okay. got to make sure that he is <laughs> truly unconscious. So, hello, wake up, wake up. And he's not responding. Um, so now I've got to see if he's breathing or not. And so I'm going to open up the airway and check for breathing. And I'm going to watch his chest. And I'm going to do that for 10 seconds. And I'm not hearing any breathing. So we need some help. Okay. So, Ernest, can I get you to call 911? Tell them that we have an uh, unconscious person here at First Aid for Life who is not breathing. Report back to me. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, I'll call 911 now. And I do, you know the, do you know the number of 911? Uh, Asterisk 911. 911. Exactly. 911. And, um, and then I'm going to get Rachel to go get the defibrillator. So, Rachel, she knows exactly where the defibrillator is, and here she sure comes. Is. Can I push you out of the way a little bit yes. here? Good. Oh, no. So what, what does a distributor Apply do? Okay, so what it's going to do chest. is go ahead and plug in the pads okay. connector next so to I'm just going to continue these compressions here. And here we go. Apply pads. Plug in connector. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. So now it's going to see if they're in a shockable rhythm or Shock not. advised. And Charging. They are. Stay clear of patient. So we just have to make sure Deliver that it's safe that we're not now. touching him. Press so put your hands up. I'm now. Tell Rachel you're clear. I'm clear. You're clear. Everyone's clear. Yep. Deliver yep. shock clear. now. Shock delivered. I've watched okay. Grace and Alan oh. a lot of times, so I, I know to do that. CPR. All right. So then I would either he's going to respond and be resuscitated, or I'm going to have to do some more CPR, and um, and then we might have to do another shock. So what this machine is doing is think about when your computer freezes. Okay. Yeah. So your computer, the mouse isn't moving, the screen is on, but the mouse isn't moving. It's just not working. And so, um, what do you do? What do you do to your computer then? Reboot. You reboot. reboot. And that's what this is doing. There's still electrical activity in the heart. It's not functioning, it's not pumping any blood, but there's still electrical activity. And so by getting that AED on there quickly, it's rebooting the heart. And then hopefully it's gonna start up normally. But we need to, re to remind our viewers that this is done in between the time that we're waiting for the first aid. 
to, to come. To come. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We've had multiple um, um, people being resuscitated right here in Saskatoon uh, by general lay rescuers, just like, oh. like us. And uh, so they just happened to be maybe at the hockey rink. And uh, Shro Arena actually had two uh, resuscitations here within the last couple of years. Just somebody on the ice, they brought out their defibrillator, one of the players put it on and resuscitated them. Mm. So we've had so many survivals due to the defibrillation being on there quickly. But a key component is early compressions as well. And that's where, you know, you call 911, you're going to start those compressions, and when the AED arrives, um, you know, it's an integral part of the whole process. Anything else that our viewers need to know? Um, get trained. Don't be afraid of the defibrillator, because you, if you come take a CPR class, you will also be trained in the use of the defibrillator. Uh, take a first aid and CPR class, and because uh, you never want to be put in a situation where you have a loved one, a family member, mm -hmm. and you don't know what to do. You know? Exactly. I think uh, education is, is, is the key here. Like, mm -hmm. Somebody should have at least a knowledge on how to do the CPR at least. Exactly. And that makes a big difference for someone's life. Yeah. And if you have a really busy schedule, there's a new course called Blended Learning. And so you would do half the course online on your own time, and then you only have to come here for, for the one day. And so it's a great option if you have a really busy schedule to still get trained. And we have weekend and evenings and weekday courses, so no excuse. <laughs> so how about drowning? How about Drowning. Um, well, with drowning, you are still going to be doing CPR. It doesn't change. Okay. Okay, so with drowning, um, you know, if you find somebody who is unresponsive, you're going to do exactly what we did here. You're just going to take them out of the water and uh, begin your compressions and hopefully an AD. And um, just, I believe it was on the weekend, there was a little four year old was who that? was resuscitated with CPR here in Saskatchewan. Oh, wow. It's That's been on good. The news. Yeah. So there was just some people that were at the beach that knew what to do, and they started doing CPR on this little boy. So, one of the things that almost always happens to Ernest is choking. <laughs> is there anything? <laughs> Why well, I me? Mean, we can do with the chokes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, let's. Uh, can I use you for the demo? Oh sure. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's say we're at a restaurant, we're enjoying a nice dinner, right? Just chowing down, and you're just about to swallow, and Ernest here tells a joke just as the food's going down, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the first thing that usually somebody does is they're starting to choke. Yeah. They're starting to cough a lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> so not just a polite little, <clears throat> excuse me, cough, right? It's usually a very forceful cough. And often they get embarrassed, and they get up and they go to the washroom. Mm -hmm. So we always want to stay with them. We always, we don't want That's to let dangerous. them That's dangerous, and we don't want them to be alone. That's right, because all of a sudden it gets to be a complete obstruction, it gets mm -hmm. worse, and they're all by themselves. So always stay with somebody who is choking, and once they aren't able to get that good forceful cough anymore, or if it's a very weak cough, or it's just not coming out, then we need to intervene, okay? So we're gonna start just at the top like we did before, um, checking the scene, making sure that everything is safe, and the first thing I'm gonna go, are you choking? Okay, he's not able to talk. If he says, yes, I'm choking, well then I, I know that your airway is open, right? But he nods. Now, it seems like a silly question, but what else could be going on when somebody's going like this and gasping for air? What do you think, it, what else could be going on? They could be having allergic reaction. Okay. It's gonna look the same, right? So first of all, we confirm that they're choking and then I'm trained in first aid, I can help you. And I'll just get you to turn this way towards the camera. I'm gonna get you to lean forward as much as you can. And I'm gonna give five firm back blows between the shoulder blades. One, two, three, four, five. He's still choking. I'm gonna position myself around from behind. Finger in the belly button. One hand just above that finger. And I'm gonna go five abdominal thrusts. One, two, three, four, five. Still choking, lean forward. Good. All right, he coughed it out. I can catch it. <laughs> it's piece of steak in there. Exactly, exactly. So, um, so you start with the back blow. Sometimes you never get to the abdominal thrust, and we just alternate between the back blows and the abdominal thrust. Okay, and uh, they should still uh, seek medical attention. So maybe when you initially start um, choking, I would have sent you to call 911 and maybe just two back blows and it popped out 
then you should just go to the Medi Clinic, make sure there wasn't any damage or anything like that. But cool. Yeah. Thank you very much, wow. Tammy, for having us. That was really helpful, Tammy. Thank you so much. You're um, welcome. Well, well, we are going to our next segment. This time we would go to emergency situations with infants and kids. Sure. And Alicia will help you out with that. Thank you. Ayan mga kababayan, welcome back po ulit sa Pinoy Channel. Aside sa napakalamig na weather kapag September, ano pa bang exciting? Eh di first day of school, andito po tayo ngayon sa University of Saskatchewan and we do have two students with me right now from the Department of Political Studies. So we do have Isaac and Mariam. How are you guys doing today? Yeah, we oh, good. I'm doing great. Great, yeah. great. Okay, so um, it's the first day of school today in the university. What were the preparations that you have been doing, you know, to get ready for the school year? Ah, it's been somehow stressful, but, you know, we, you know, we've already started classes and everything, you know. Today we had act actually an mm -hmm. introduction in yeah. class, so from next week we're going to start classes and everything. Mm -hmm. The way things are going, you know, it's going smoothly. Going and smoothly, hopefully it's yeah. going to be, you know, good. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's good to hear. How about for you, Isaac? Um, it's quite cool this mm -hmm. uh, today. Actually, I don't have class today and okay. um, probably tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm now trying to locate my my lecture yeah. classes mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, my my supervisors yeah. where I can go for class and mm -hmm. other. So that's what I'm doing today, and I'm also okay. trying to do printing and it's difficult to yeah. as a new international student sometimes locations are a bit difficult but yeah, yeah. you're trying to yeah, find your way around the yeah. yeah. around so yeah. that yeah. even yeah. today i wanted to print but yeah. it took me about uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes to locate where i can do yeah. printing so it's cool it's been it's been great today and then um, at least i've met a lot of people today yeah. as well that's awesome. So are you both in first year or what year are yeah, you guys in? Both okay. Of us, we are in first year. Okay. You know, masters. Yes. Project based. So yes. We have so, a lot to do anyway. Mm -hmm. so, so I know that you both are in the graduate school. So are you going to the barbecue right oh, after? Sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very long. I don't know yeah. where my I told somebody to be there, but yeah. I don't know I whether don't I can know. look you at know, the person. Really, this is not encouraging, yeah. you know. The queue is too much, mm -hmm. you know. Maybe before we reach there, the food yeah, is the finished. Food is not <laughs> the meat is finished. <laughs> and I think I can hear music now, so I think the party is getting started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can move around started. to listen yeah. to Mpari, but yeah. then we can't follow this queue, you know. Mm -hmm. The queue is too long. Yeah, I just so. have to be very patient. Yeah. Very yes. patient, Okay, you know? well, thank you very much you for your time today. Okay, thank you. All right. Bye. Ayan mga kababayan, first day of classes ulit dito lang sa University of Saskatchewan. And as you can see, meron na nga po tayong barbecue for the graduate studies. And again, maraming maraming salamat po. See you later! Ayan mga kababayan, nabanggit ko nga earlier today na first day of classes dito sa University of Saskatchewan. At meron tayong dalawang guests ulit na mga kababayan natin from Philippines, mga kapo nating Pilipino. Ayan, we have Alyssa and Remy. Alyssa, how are you feeling ngayong first day of classes sa university? Kinakabahan po. <laughs> of course. Um, naka arts and science po, pre prerequisite pre for nursing. Okay, at talagang nakakabahan ng <laughs> first day of classes, di ba? Remy, ikaw, ano pre? Preparations ang ginawa mo to get ready for today? Well, bumili po kami ng mga supplies, mga notebooks po para ganun. And then, we naganap po kami ng class namin for today. Okay, and yeah. everything's going well for both of you? <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time today, Alisa and Remy. Well, good luck and congratulations on the university years. Okay, ayan mga kababayan. So talaga nga naman nakakabaka pag first day of school, di ba? Hindi lang sa university, pati sa high school or sa elementary. So kahit na anong grade level pa yan, get ready for school. Maraming salamat mga kababayan.
Yes, may dugumiginaw na po sa labas at ano ba pwede natin gawin which is indoor. Nako, maritime something exciting only here in Saskatoon. Mga kababayans, we are in Mastermind Live Escape. And I have a guest with me for today, Diana. And Diana is the owner of Mastermind Live Escape. So, Diana, tell us, um, what is this business all about? So Mastermind Live Escapes opened about uh, two and a half months ago, and it was just a fun event, something new for parents to do with their kids or for a group of friends to do for birthday parties or team building events. And it's ideal for a group of four to six people to come out and do something different. So you're put into a room with your teammates, so you're not locked in or anything like that. And you're given 60 minutes to solve some puzzles okay, so and look for some hour. clues. Yeah. And, yeah, and try to get out of this yeah. room. But mm -hmm. not scary, it's just lots of fun. Okay. <laughs> so what's the minimum age requirement for them to um, play this game? This is, requires, mm -hmm. it's, it's a brain type of game. So we don't usually, you know, for children, yeah. it's technically ages 12 and up, okay. accompanied and up. with an adult. Okay. Yeah. So again, 12 and up and accompanied with an adult. So where can we find a Mastermind Life Escape? Um, you can get more information on www.escapesaskatoon.ca. And um, we are located on 123 Avenue B South. So just a block away from the Cactus Club. So you're close to everything to go for drinks with your friends after or whatever you want to do. There, so after you go shopping, eat at Cactus Club, and then come here for something more exciting. And what are your operating hours? Um, we're mostly open in the evenings and weekends, so starting from 4.30 on a mm -hmm. Wednesday to a Friday night, and then Saturdays, Sundays. Our hours are online, mm -hmm. and mostly open just through a booked appointment. So okay. you have to appointment to come in, you can't okay. just walk in. So again, you need to book your appointment, and what's the phone number again? It's um, 306-261-2388. Okay, so for more information, the website is right here, www.escapesaskatoon.ca. Thank you very much, Diana. Thank you. Sabi ko, hindi po ganun kadali. We have Joaquin and Bettina here. Anong masasabi ninyo about the game? Fun. Did you have fun? Was it yes. easy? No. Yes. No. 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 Don't worry. Yes. I'm confused. No. Yes. No? Yes? Okay. Ngayon, tanungin naman natin ang kanilang kakay. What did you think? Um, hindi siya madali. Hindi siya madali. Hindi siya madali. Pero it was fun trying to solve all those puzzles. Mm -hmm. and, and will you guys come back? Yes. yes. Ayan. Ayan po mga kababayan, so if you're wanting to do something fun, ano pang hinihintay ninyo, bisitahin niyo na po ang Mastermind Live Escape.
Guys, I mean, in your we had a very exciting episode this yes, time. No, and I'm having a good time. Ayan, yeah. <laughs> ayan, kaya naman, pasalamatan natin ang mga nakasama natin today sa First Aid yeah. for Life Saskatoon. Uh, Saskatoon. So, na, na nagturo sa atin ng methods and techniques how to save a life. So, pasalamatan po natin si, uh, mm-hmm. si Tommy and Rachel. Rachel. Yes. Wow. Yes. Pati po si Elisha, kung sino nagturo ng um, babysitting on how to prevent injuries. Wow. That's right. That's right. Okay. Ayan. So, thank you rin po sa mga sponsors natin today sa segment natin. Unang-una natin si Great Way Financial. Yeah, Siyempre. thank you. Siyempre, nandiyan ang Select Realty. Ayun. Siyempre, nandiyan din ang Mama's Best Foods. Yeah. Oh, at wag din natin kakalimutan, maraming maraming salamat sa Fabitac. That's yes. right. That's right. Mm. Oh, okay. Wag natin din ang Jay Mendoza immigration ng yes, of course. Yes, Ayan. true. Yeah. Kaya ano mga natutunan nyo ngayong araw? Ako natutunan ko is yung paggamit ng defibrillator. AED. Binilin mo na yung AED pala, isa sa mga, uh, isa sa mga magandang um, ways or isa sa mga tools na magagamit mm-hmm. mo to prolong someone's, someone else's life kapag may emergency. Exactly. Biruin mo yun. Napaka- Importante pala niya. Yeah. At ginamit natin yan dito sa dami natin. Ito yes. po si Kuya Jeric yes, ngayon. Yes, wala na <laughs> <yun>. <laughs> 
Ito naman si Dex. Si Dex. Hello, mga mga Pinay channel. Yeah. Also, I learned about, you know, in any situation like this, is kailangan magkaroon ka ng pre uh, strong presence of mind. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, initial assessment right. and obviously call 911 right away to get some help, you know, kung wala pa yung... Uh, ambulance or whatever, right? Tsaka kalma lang. Kalma lang. Huwag oh, magpanik. So, yes. Huwag magpanik kasi baka kayo rin ng ano eh. Kayo, kayo isin. Baka kayo mauna. Baka mauna pa kayo sa naaksidente pag kayo nagpanik. Di ba? Ako naman madalas akong kumain sa restaurant. So, um, natutunan, natutunan ko kanina kung paano mag first aid ng choking. Yes. So, mag-aabag mag na ako next so, time. So, natutunan mo rin kuya ano. Lumunok ko naman na bago mag <laughs> Baka kasi mag-choke. <laughs> Ayan, at ako mga kababayan, nakikita nyo, dyan pa yung mga injuries ko. So, ang natutunan ko ngayon is how to use different kinds of bandages for different kinds of injuries. Wow. Yeah. Hindi pala yeah, pare-pareho no? ang mga bandages. True. Ayan. Galing ano, biro mo, marami palang talagang yung first aid kit na yun, napakaliit na bagay. Oh. Pero, ang laki-laki na magagawa sa iyo when exactly. it comes to saving someone else's life. Yeah. True. No. Nakakatawa, no? madami na naman natutunan. I'm sure mm -hmm. ang ating mga Kapinoy Channel na nanonood ngayon dyan sa ating segment na ito. True. At kung na-miss nyo naman po ang aming episode ngayon, uh, manatili po lamang kayong pumunta sa official Facebook page at official social media accounts ng Pinoy Channel at magpunta rin po kayo sa website or official YouTube page ng Shaw Cable Channel, uh, Shaw Cable TV. Doon mapapanood nyo po, hanapin nyo lamang po ang, uh, ang Pinoy Channel so that masubaybayan nyo po ang mga episodes na naipakita na namin noong mga no mga nakaraan. Ma previous previous Or they can send us an emails kanila mga suggestions sa pinoychannelsk at gmail.com. Yes. Right. I, I, Pinoy Channel na yan. Pag may nakita kayong magandang episode or may nakita kayong magandang topic na pwede namin i-discuss, mm -hmm. Pinoy Channel na yan. That's right. right. Yun. So, at dyan po mga kababayan, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong support uli. And we'll see you in another episode. Ako po si Jeannie Buwan. And this is Jerick. Ako naman po si Joey Amor together with a day might be just 24 hours, but why is it so hard to get through? You keep reminding yourself that today is just temporary.